Welcome back to SinCityBounty.com, the only podcast where we give you a new curse word to use every week. Every single fucking week. Every fucking week. Hooray for fucking curse words. Hey, if you're not, if you're listening and uh, you want to watch us live here in the studio, everybody, everybody wave at the camera. Uh, you can go to SinCityBounty.com and uh, hit the play button on the big uh, video screen that's there. We are streaming live via Ustream as we do every single Tuesday. You can join the chat. There's a little link right underneath it where you can click on that and it'll open the chat. Um, do you have to sign in to have a to be able to chat? Do yeah, you, to make you need an, an account? account. Yeah, you could be anonymous. Like you don't have to use a name, but if if you just want to, I think if you want to observe, you can stay in as anonymous. Right. But if you but want, if to, you want chat, to chat, but it's free can, to create an account. Right. It is free. And you can make up a like a really cool name. Yeah. Yeah, you so. could be Long Schlong Silver. Well, okay. <laughs> Did, didn't we have one of those in chat? Uh, we had something like that, like <laughs> BBC Dude LV twenty four thirty or some shit like that. <laughs> I love it. I love some of the names that people come up with. I was uh uh I I don't have the full details on the story, but um I was uh, on one of my podcasts that I listened to for news. There was this study of uh, game designers. And women get the short end of the stick. Obviously. So a lot of women make up these great, great online names and are gender anonymous when they post to this one site, which gets them, of course, more kudos and play and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Well, the, one of the really bad things, this is, this is one of the really bad things about the gaming community and the internet and where they intersect, that little Venn diagram of intersection. There was a lot of rampant violent sexism online against female gamers violent yes as in most female gamers who are openly female on the internet get rape threats on a daily basis holy mother of cow it's really terrible um there's one lady who's been doing online gaming and game reviews on youtube since youtube was not owned by google a long fucking time ago um and she was interviewed once and said that she she kind of knows just by a subject line whether or not an email or a comment is going to have a rape thread in it. So she just scrolls through them. She gets them so many times a day. She's like, I'm not even phased by them anymore. And that's bad because one day one of these guys is going to follow through. I do actually remember the podcast I listened to. It's one of the science podcasts that I listened to. And I don't know if it's like a multitude of death threats or rape threats. But there's a lot of misogyny in the science world mm -hmm. when it comes to female scientists blogging or podcasting or whatever. Oh, God. The hate mail that some of the women in science get is amazing. And it doesn't matter if you're ugly or beautiful. If you're ugly, you get rape threats because you're an ugly fucking bitch and it's the only way you're going to have sex. And if you're beautiful, you get rape threats because you're beautiful and you don't deserve to be beautiful and smart. That is fucked up. It is fucked that up. That belongs in your list, your my, new segment. My new segment? Yeah, that does. Maybe we'll cover that. when the, well, You know what? When we get the geek guys in here, we'll cover that. That's a good idea. We should prep them because they probably are blind to it because they like girls. Right, right. <laughs> They'd be, they're the ones on there going, Hi, my name is Thomas, <laughs> and I think you're pretty. <laughs> I'd like to take you out for tea, not coffee. I don't want to be your baby daddy. No coffee. No coffee. That joke will never die. No, never. We will have fans years from now who won't even know the original story about why coffee is not a good first date because it automatically assumes you're going to be we'll a baby daddy. We'll just have to retell the story every now and then. Every occasion. I think we should open the show and do it. You know how we do our 20-minute riff on something? Yeah. So instead of doing it on misogyny, because it's just so rampant, right? Instead, of, I want to do it on your Groupon coupon. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about your Groupon coupon? Oh, yeah, you have your name badge up. I do. Everybody can see who you are. I just want to rub my boob. That's all. I love your top. <laughs> so, so tell us about your Groupon. She sent us in. Uh, we should probably just post it on the wall. A link to a Groupon that every lady needs. <laughs> and some dudes. It is It is literally a blow up. What What do you even it's call like a, it? It's like a cushion. Like something you would sit on. Like an air bubble. Like a, like a bean bag chair. Right, like one of those things in the seventies that you would blow up and sit on. Right. Like just a blow up chair with um with uh dildo in the middle. <laughs> but it's sold on Groupon. 
<laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to post it. It's an inflatable seat dong. That's yes, what that's what I, it's called. An inflatable, inflatable seat, seat dong. with vibrating dong. I love that the part of the title is dong. Dong. I mean, that's ultimate. Dong. I fucking. I love this. I love this so much. I'm willing, almost willing. Maybe one day I would go buy it and do a product review on it. And it comes. Uh, uh, the picture of it has it in black and in purple. <laughs> so to match your decor. Because it's just going to be sitting around in your living room. So I wanna, today, today, I wanna, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I wanted to. I was trying to pull it back up to look at the. Um, I was reading it earlier for the feedback, <laughs> and and I'm trying to see if I could find uh, where I saw before that it had um, some feedback, but one was it does not clean easily. Oh. <laughs> It's made of so. plastic rubber. You should just be able to hose it off. Put it in the shower with some soap. You would think. The, the weight capa- capacity is 300 pounds. Hey. So, so that's, can, that's uh, a pretty good plus size girl could yeah, fit on yeah. that bad boy. Yeah, you could you do some a big chubby girl that. up on that. And you know, that's that's rated at the highest. No, that's rated. Well, what know. that's rated for is what the uh, government will allow them to put on safely. It'll probably hold 500 as long <coughs> as you don't do a flying jump onto it. Well, hey, I, I can't. For some reason, my Facebook, my mobile Facebook won't let me post. Weird. It is. I'm, I'm, I have it up where there's the ratings and it is not. It's saying there are no user reviews yet, but I'm telling you, I read them earlier. I, I, only a couple. <laughs> it's a great deal. It's originally $99.99. It's on sale for twenty four ninety nine. dollars <laughs> 75 percent off. We should so get a commission for we selling should. these. I love like there's little plastic candles on the you side. You can hold on. So you can hold on. <laughs> you can uh, you can take that seat for a ride. <laughs> you had to just bounce it across your living room on it. I got it. Okay, I posted it to the wall. So go to our oh. Facebook uh, wall, Cincinnati Bounty, and you can see uh, the ad for the Groupon for the inflatable. What's it? The dong. In, in, no, inflatable bowl dong. Yes. Do Too we have to do this? funny. Now, inflatable vibrating dong. Um, I really don't want to because no. of the kind of show we are. Yeah, no, we should. But shouldn't. maybe we will at the end. We'll do no. a shout out at the end when we've, we're calmer, or maybe during the political se- segment. <laughs> America, what the fuck? <laughs> uh. So where? Wh- who are you that you get mail like this? Why do you get vibrator <laughs> you groupons? Get vibrator gr- groupons. Um, the problem is, is once you buy a vibrator on Groupon, oh! <laughs> they suggest things they think you will like. Yeah, all I get are like Calabunga Bay tickets and shit like I that on trips. my Groupon. Yeah, yeah I get trips. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about your last Groupon <laughs> vibrator experience, please. The, the, the last experience was I, I purchased a vibrator, a... a it, it's purple, it has the little rabbit on it, um, but it is... Way too big. Like it, it's not. It's not really usable. If you want the rabbit to hit at right the, you know, at the right spot, on your you have clit, to let the. It goes too deep. Yeah, it goes too deep. You have to let the rest, you know, hit your teeth or something from inside because it's just. And it um it has so many settings that it's just too many choices. Did like, you? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say like just. Pick one, like keep it on. I don't need it to keep going off and on, off and on. Like <laughs> just stay on. <laughs> I actually, I have a an egg. Those are my favorite kind of vibrators, mm-hmm. the little eggs. Uh, but this one's new and fancy, and it's got like a the you know the the string that's attached to the controller. That's right. I'm sorry. I think you're too far away from the microphone. Am I too far from the mic? Okay. Oh, okay. Um. It's got those multiple settings. Mm-hmm. It's got like 15 different settings. Who needs these many settings? I actually, they're, they're, I, I cycle through them as I'm looking <laughs> for the one that I want. And I go, oh, let me try this one for a while. Most of them I don't like, but there are three of them that I do. So <laughs> so three settings will be good, but the three that I like. Yeah. And I think that goes for anybody who uses vibrators. It's, I don't, see, I, I don't really like vibrators that much. They get me off too soon. I think it, I mean, it's good if like you just need to rub one out to t- get rid of a headache or something like that's great. But I like 
involved masturbation. So my toys don't vibrate. They're insertables. They're all insertables. I'm a ain't nobody got time for that kind of girl. Yeah, see. I'm the same. I'm like, I'm let's, like how efficient can I be? Let's get in and out. And I often, I often will do it to put me, myself to sleep. Yeah. So I want to get to sleep like right away. So I'm not waiting. Like, no involvement, no <sighs> acrobatics, no nothing. Just boom, boomed out of there. I've, I, well, I used to have one. I had to get rid of it. But I used to have one that had a suction cup base on I'm going to tell you, I had some fun with that one, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Put him anywhere. I think the involved masturbation <laughs> isn't called masturbation anymore because I would rather do that with a partner. Yeah, Even if it involves toys, right? Yeah. If, I like toys with partners. That can take all the time in the world for me. But when it's just me getting off, yeah, I'm in and out. That's why Tumblr porn is the best because Tumblr you're in, watch it for a little bit, you're out. You don't have to go searching on Pornhub, you know, put in, look for tags or anything like that. Just or open you know, your porn if you're Tumblr just a frequent you visitor, your searches are already saved and you just want to click, boom, most recent videos. <laughs> X Hamster knows me very well. <laughs> I don't even get the other categories anymore, just the shit I watch. <laughs> it's like Google that way. This is this is the new tech, right? Yeah. Where all of your favorite things just show up on your wall. Whether you're Googling, it shows up in that sidebar, or on Facebook, which right. totally freaks me out, even though I know they do it, freaks me out every single time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So speaking of Facebook, when they changed their news feed settings just recently, suddenly I went from all of my friends in my news feed to I like to say fuck was every third <laughs> post in my news feed I was like damn I must really share a lot of their stuff because <laughs> it was like maybe Alexia maybe Kelly maybe my sister I like to say fuck would be seven posts <laughs> and then maybe someone else I knew I like to say fuck four more posts like it is was, that a site it's a Facebook uh, page and they just post like curse word memes you know shit like you know of course i say fuck if saying fuck where it's there's one i posted recently that said if, that said if if saying the word fuck burned calories i'd be a skinny motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i would be i would weigh nothing i would be one of those disgusting bone sticking out models if fucking well if fucking does burn calories but if the word fuck burned calories Vendetta said, um, XAM has recommendations. It's quick and easy. It sure is. And he also had uh, an egg. It was cool. Yeah. yeah They're good oh. for men, too. Right on the taint, if they don't have too sensitive of balls, or right around the base of the cock. Or, if you guys real adventurous, you just press it up against his rectum. Woo! And this is where like multiple different, or different kinds of settings are a good thing. Because... <laughs> If you put that up against uh, the taint mm -hmm. or the rectum, right, and you have it on high, mm. <laughs> well, the fucker's going to freak out. Sure so you is. can put yeah, it on the good. low setting. Maybe the one that climbs. I like that one. The one that goes. I like that one, too. <laughs> but what happens with that one is, is right as you're, you're on the high and you're getting there, then it goes. Yep, it does. I'm like, no, no, fucker. That's not what I want. <laughs> but that's, a, that's, that's one for play. Yeah, no, I just want to get in there and get done. So she, she puts it on turbo. <laughs> it doesn't even really vibrate anymore. It just hums. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes. Let's be done. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Let's get it done. Two and a half minutes is that's a good good length amount yeah, of time that's there. It. I guess. <laughs> I mean, Which I don't. Is probably why I haven't masturbated in a while. Cause I'm just like I don't have time. It has been a while. You're, you're more of like a let's pour some wine, light some candles. <laughs> mm, I'm gonna get busy so with much. myself. Yeah. No, I'm whisper more like... in your own ear. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> just put it in the rusty wagon wheel. The rusty <laughs> wagon wheel. <laughs> I prefer the rusty sheriff's badge, the leather Cheerio, the chocolate donut. We should do a survey of men who like their butthole touched with vibrators. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be the number one, or are you gonna decline to answer that question? Oh, hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. Mm. Would gotta, you be willing to try? This is why we need to get this. Is Not why, on the air. This is why we need to get more guests in the studio. So. Yeah. So uh, Lawrence of Arabia doesn't have to answer all the questions for the men of the world. That and, you know, maybe we can hook them up. Because that's the kind of girls we are. Mm -hmm. We do do that. I will hook up anybody of mine that needs hooking up. <laughs> <laughs>
you know what? I got some. If you aren't all that picky and you just want to get laid, I know a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> that will go either which way. Well, here's here's the deal. <laughs> if you have a vagina. The whole, like, I could get laid anywhere is pretty much a given. Yeah. But no, I, here, I, okay, let me clarify. If you are a dude, if you are a chick and you want to get laid by a dude, maybe a girl, and you're not that picky, I can hook you up. Now, may not be your type, <laughs> may not be even in the solar system of what you would prefer, but if you're just looking to scratch the itch and you don't want to do it yourself, I know people. And you know what? Um, while I sometimes I have that philosophy as well, I will hook a, a brother up or a sister up if they want it. I am kind of wary, like if if I know Toxie is single right now, right? Mm -hmm. I would not recommend her to even if it's just a hookup. I would not recommend her. I would not hook her up with a guy that I knew to be an ass. No, 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 no. No, I would never you know? hook anyone up with it. No, all of these guys are nice guys that I absolutely love to pieces that aren't getting laid and should be getting laid regularly. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice guys. Nice guys should get laid. Nice it's guys true. should get laid. Yes, they, they do. They should at least get a handy in the theater or something. Are there girls that are willing to do just a handy? Um, maybe. There are. I know people. Oh, you know people? I know people. Well, would they have to pay for the handy? Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to ask you girls a question later on in the show. Okay. All right. America. What the fuck? <laughs> we need some music for that. We need some, like, presidential music or something. <laughs> what the fuck? So, today is Super Tuesday. For those of you who don't know what the fuck Super Tuesday was, there were, like, 80,000 primaries today. Only, I think there were, like, what, six? Seven? Whatever. More than there usually are on any given day. Um, and so I was expecting Clinton to sweep or maybe it to be a 50-50 split between her and Sanders. Clinton swept the primaries. There's Whoops. really no surprise there. Um, I was expecting a closer, a smaller gap between first and second for the Republican Party. The gap is so big that everyone else should just drop out now because there are no more delegates left for any other Republicans. Yeah, so the total delegates that Trump received today out of the entire Republican Party, he received 221. He has 221 delegates as of today. Cruz, the next in line, only has 69. Only. I mean, 69 is a good number, but hey, it's not good enough for delegates. I mean, what the fuck? Trump is... I am. I can't even. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take a. A, a Jimmy Fallon bit here and go. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, why? Why? What? What is so? Somebody tried to explain it to me one time. Like because he speaks his mind. I'm like Hitler did too. And we see where that fucking went. I will tell you. I watched a, a segment today, where um, first have you all seen that video on um. Gosh, what is that late night show guy? The British guy or something? No, Colin Ferguson? No. Colin Ferguson? No, no. No, he's all, all, he's not he's off the air now. Oh. Yeah. John Oliver. John Oliver, John Oliver tonight. If you have not seen that video, you last must see that video. Is if, it The Drumpf? Yes. You have to see that video. You you just have to. But I watched one today where somebody they made a pamphlet and they went out to Trump supporters and they read them quotes and said, do you believe these? Like, do you stand behind Trump with these quotes? And everybody's like, they're saying these quotes. And they're like, yes, absolutely. Like, I feel it. Here's what he mean. Yeah, that this is great. And they go, yeah, actually, they're all by Hitler. Um, we just changed it to say Donald Trump. And then, but if, and then one gentleman's like, well, if Donald Trump had said them, I would still support him. There was an actual quote that he said this week. That was uh, from some fascist, right? Mm -hmm. Some famous fascist said it. And uh, when he was interviewed and asked if he wanted to align himself with this fascist, he said, hey, I'm just looking for good quotes, you know, to grab people. And it grabbed you. <laughs> I can't understand what the fuck is going on. I mean, thankfully, 
all of the polls out there say no matter what we're ending up with the democratic president next year or after this term it's either going to be hillary or bernie nobody really gives a shit uh clinton and sanders both poll 30 30 20 to 30 percent above trump um, now you throw Rubio or Cruz in there, and then it starts to get a little iffy. But as we can see here, Trump is obviously going – I mean, unless the Republican Party just says, fuck the delegate system, we got to pick somebody else because this crazy fucker is going to kill us. He, I'm, I'm, ta I'm, I'm making a, a prediction right now. If Trump gets the nomination, this will be the last year we see the Republican Party be a force to be reckoned with. From this point forward, it will be Democrats and a third party. So what what I'm understanding is these primary elections are sort of like – it's like pledging for somebody who's running a five-mile K, right? The yes. delegates that people have now, they're not um, – they're not like locked in to have to vote for – Trump. So yeah, he might be taken out, but at the at the Republican convention, it could completely go a different way. Yeah, the delegates could suddenly decide to all vote a different way, which I pray to God the Republican Party comes to their senses and they do that. Um, but if uh, if it were the reverse, as the people who vote it, you would feel betrayed. You would feel completely betrayed that this is who we the people chose. I felt betrayed the first time George W. got elected because he didn't win the popular vote. Right. Al Gore, right. Uh, George W. There, there is, unfortunately, with the way our election system works, it doesn't – I hate saying this and I hate it when other people say it, but it really doesn't matter how you vote. It matters how a large group of people vote. Now, you have to go out and become a part of that group of people and you can maybe sway that group of people one way or the other, but – Ultimately, what it comes down to is what the Electoral College or the party delegates decide to vote for. That's on a federal level. Your vote does count at Locally. a local level because the delegates come from the locals. So who you put into office on the local level makes a difference. Delegates are not elected officials. Not always. Some of them are. Some of them are, but They're not secret. The but not the majority of them. I'll tell you, as a member of the Libertarian Party, I can go and apply and become a delegate for Nevada. Um, I know that a lot of the Democratic people pull their delegates out of people who volunteer for the Democratic Party in that state or in that city. Each city gets, depending on how it works, some cities get a certain amount of delegates that they can send off to the the conference or whatever the fuck it's called. Convention. Convention. And, uh, and, and so... That city usually decides, and it's usually either somebody elected or it's, you know, like th that lady standing on the corner dressed head to go in Hillary fucking go Hillary gear. She'll probably end up being a delegate. In this case, in, <laughs> in this election, I'm so happy for a delegate system, right? I'm so happy that we have to wait to the Republic Republican convention to find out if Don – there are – this is what has – I think this is the main thing that has been bugging me about this uh, election season so far. I have found out things about people that I never wanted to know. Some very good friends that I have that I admire who support Donald Trump or who post things about what Donald Trump has said or did that are clearly racist and fascist. <laughs> and I wonder – who are these people who are supposed to be my friends? And I don't want to like unfriend them uh, or unfollow them on any of my social media. And then when I go to family events, I'm sorry, as much as I love my mom, she likes Donald Trump. Mm -mm. I don't even ask my family because they all crazy. Um, I, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get the Donald Trump phenomenon. Like, I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny. I thought it was a joke at first. Like, oh, he's running for president. Look at all the crazy shit he's saying. But every comedian that I know of at the beginning of the election season, as it were, were like, oh, please let Donald run for president. Mm -hmm. They are all beat kicking themselves in the ass right now because they have to put up. I mean, they have material, yes, but they have to put up with the way that America is thinking right now. It's ridiculous. I... Oh, sorry. Go no, go. I have to tell you that um, I, I kind of have the same thing where, you know, one day my little brother, whom I love and adore, uh, posted something about Trump. <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, 
did you really? <laughs> did you really? Like, dude, I changed your diapers when you were a kid. Did you really just post this? <laughs> and um, I have another gentleman who I, I keep wondering the same, like, who's really voting for, for him? Who really are these people? Who amongst my friends is like, <laughs> who's crazy? I love Trump. But I have this this guy I went to school with, and he just um just yesterday, you know, on the East Coast, he went to a uh a, a what uh, uh where he's speaking, uh what is it called? Conference. Rally. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, rally. Whatever. And so he was Trump was there, and this is the one where you know his Secret Service uh, threw out a, a bunch of black kids. Um, is that the one where they slammed the reporter into the table because no, he was a foot is, and a half over the line? <laughs> no, this is uh, since then. Oh. Uh, but they were afraid that they were going to protest. So um, he took video like leading up to it and during it. And this is a gentleman who like up until this point, I'm like, like this guy has a really great head on his shoulders. He's been very successful <laughs> since school. <laughs> he has really great kids. Like he, he's a, a successful businessman. And then I'm all like, oh, you're an asshole. Like so I wasn't here's, suspecting it. Here's what I see. When someone I don't expect, like I know two dudes at work. One of them I kind of expected was going to be voting for Trump. But the other one totally took me by surprise because he's a fellow libertarian like me. And we've talked about Gary Johnson extensively and a couple of the other libertarian candidates. But we all know Johnson's going to get it. So, But I really thought for certain that – you know, he was on my team because he said he was on my team. And he's like, I'm going to vote for Trump. He went and caucused for Trump. And I'm like, he said, I voted to be a Republican. So I could, or I changed to be a Republican. So I go caucus for Trump. I was like, I felt betrayed. All that I can see in my head are these people who say, you know, these well-respected people that you think have got a good head on their shoulders are standing there in a business suit. Suddenly they say, I'm going to vote for Trump. And then poof, at a flash of sparkly lights and the smell of hay, they turn into a country bumpkin with a piece of straw sticking out of their mouth and a big ass red neck going, eh, Trump. Well, I just, eh. You know, the whole thing with Biden, like with Biden, how people would, you know, joke how he was, you know, he's kind of dumb and, um, you know, things along those lines. He, run? He, he, he decided not to. He was asked. Yeah. But take that and take people's feedback on that. And now times it by like a million. It's great. What what you think right now, the fact that Trump speaks his mind, that's fabulous. That is wonderful. He speaks his mind. You know when it's not wonderful? When other countries are laughing at us in two years going, you know, you guys, this is your president. I, I, right. I saw a great meme. Uh, it was a big metal fence. It was like Canada's putting up a, a fence to uh, keep the Americans out who intend on fleeing the country when Trump becomes president. <laughs> I, I'm going to go to Cuba. I'm just saying it's probably safer there if Trump becomes president. Um, I, there was something else in the news. Uh, the president of Mexico came went on the air and said, there's no way they're paying for a wall. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because he came out and said he's going to build it 10 feet higher. Yeah. Who the fuck he's going to get to build it right. is beyond me, Mexican. Right. You know. Well, it could be the <laughs> the two hundred deporting them all. The two hundred twenty six <laughs> delegates that he got tonight. <sighs> I can't understand it. Anyway, that's America. What the fuck? Yeah, everyone who voted for him, that's who gets to build the wall. What mm. one of the things? One of the things that um he this is I, I'm not. I have to do this every now and then where I say something and then I have to retract it or cover my ass about why I said it. Everybody has to do this because he's in the public eye. Almost it's like almost every other day he's saying something and then has to go back. And that's one of the thing, one of the things that you wanted to talk about. Right. He recently um, with the, the KKK, he was asked uh, on Sunday uh, he was asked if he would disavow Duke and other white supremacist groups that are supporting his campaign because when he, when the caucus happened here in Las Vegas, um, there were some KKK members out there um, promoting. Well, isn't there still some question on whether they were actually KKK members or people dressed as KKK members in protest of Donald Trump? I don't know which one it is. Yeah. However, I don't know either. It escal it continued escalating from it, there it, because it doesn't it doesn't matter if they were because right. David Duke came out yes, in support of in Trump. support. So he was asked and he said at first he just started responding, like, I don't understand 
I don't know anything what you're talking about with white supremacy or white supremacists. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Did he endorse me or what's going on? Because I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. This was his response then. So he had to, uh, obviously, <laughs> that didn't go over very well. And especially, had, especially since uh, every news organization brought mm -hmm. out the video of when he denounced David Duke before and how the Republican Party was going to crap because they allowed someone like David Duke to be a part of it. Right. And this was years ago. And there's, there's actually a lot that stems back to his father. Um, involving the KKK and just just a lot. So the smartest thing he could have done is the moment that that came up, he could have cut that off at the knee right there and like, no, I absolutely do not support this. I I turned it. Thanks very much, but I turned down your support <laughs> type deal. But instead, he kind of went around it. And so he he had to do the same. He had to backtrack and came back and said it was a bad earpiece. I, I didn't hear what they were saying. He heard everything else that your piece worked for, you know, the the rest of it. I believe it was Rachel Maddow. She says um, he, she was reporting on that. And she says, even though he said the name David Duke like five times in his right. response, right. he knew exactly what he was talking about. Right. He did two days ago come out and say, oh, I disavow David. In regards to David Duke or whatever it was, I disavow. But that's still kind of. On his Twitter, right? Yeah, on his Twitter. That's still kind of wishy-washy to well, me. But it was after the fact. Well, yeah, it was after the it fact. It was after people are going, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, you needed to cut that off, cut your ties right there. But this was two days ago, and he still got 220 on fucking delegates. He still... He's right. He, oh. How many people in America do you think are just shaking their heads? Every one of them. You, you want to know how many of them? Uh, 43%. Plus 18%. That's how many people are shaking their fucking heads. <laughs> this is 43% you know registered I'll Democrats, 39% registered Republicans, and the rest of us are sane and registered otherwise. And I'll bet you a good chunk of those Republicans are also shaking their heads. Probably. I'll bet you. Obviously not, according to the delegates. <sighs> well, we know that all the supporters of all the other candidates are. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. Vendetta said, if Trump wins, I see the U.S. finally devolving into anarchy. Down you know what? Speaking of devolving, this this election season, even though it's probably been building to this, this this has been polarizing the United States amongst just my friends, just on social media or amongst the people that I know. Mm -hmm. People have chosen a side. Either they're going to be uh, non-apologetic uh, and racist or sexist or uh, whatever ist is available mm -hmm. or they're going to be super uh touchy feely let's love everybody you know there there's like no middle ground anymore i don't see anybody in that middle anymore where they're trying to work together right. or come to come some some kind of consensus we are we we are yes but we are three there's got to be more of us out there there's got to be more of us who say you crazy whacked out right wingers and you crazy whacked out liberals who are just on so opposite ends of the spectrum what you both want entirely implausible entirely impossible you, you can't even th you can't even think about it in 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 any sort of rational light because the things you want are irrational the the answer is in the middle some of yours and some of yours and a little bit of the stuff over here that they talk about, a little bit of the stuff over here that they talk about. It's all here in the middle. It's all possible to solve this fucking problem that we have. We're hemorrhaging money. We're hemorrhaging jobs. We're hemorrhaging America into other countries. The answer's here in the middle. But but nobody wants to put down their left wing and right wing flag and 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 and, and say, okay, maybe. Maybe I can give up illegalizing abortion rights for my gun rights. And here's the worst part, the very worst part of all of it. We haven't been funny for almost 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Since the Groupon. Yeah. Since well, the fucking Groupon. I know, a few people drop out of the chat. Laughed. They're like, uh, what I'd Politics. love, I'd love if we had somebody who really was a Trump supporter that could just explain, like, here's, 
Here's why. We know. would beat them to death in the corner. Are you probably, kidding me? I'd beat them with this 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 Ethernet cord right here. It's and the funny no, thing no, is, no, out of the three of us, we don't all support the same person. No. It's not as if we're all like, not even one party. You no, know, yeah, we're, you two we're are both from, Dems. Right, but Dems. different. Different Dems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I'm going so. so I'm so going back to nonpartisan. <laughs> It's too much work. It is. It is. All right. Let's let's change gears. Let's do uh, your curse let's word of the curse week. Curse word of the week. Yes. It's time for the curse word of the week. Brought to you by Sierra from SinCityBounty.com. This week's curse word of the week is flappy-headed fuckjack. A flappy-headed fuckjack is Dr. Oz, or quote-unquote doctors, who believe that BMI is a good measure of health. BMI is an arbitrary system devised by a guy who wasn't even a mathematician, wasn't even a health, or maybe he was a mathematician, who wasn't, had it nothing to do with health, had nothing to do with science, more than a hundred years ago. Clinician probably is a better term. Some medical. I'll look Some it up. medical professional. It no, it wasn't for, a medical professional. No? No. It stands for body mass index. So it's the ratio of fat to muscle or something like that. Uh, go ahead and play that uh, song. Now, the reason why she picked this curse word of the week was in honor of Dr. Oz because he was mentioned in one of my uh, stories that I wanted to talk about. And um, I wanted to talk about Cheryl Teagues. You guys have heard the story, yes? Yes. Yes. So, um, of course, Ashley Graham, on the cover of Sports Illustrated, loved by millions that get the magazine, but there is so much, um, uh, what do you call, people against it, mm -hmm. right? Number one, no, the number one reason is because there's a curvy, curvy girl on a sports magazine. Yeah, Ashley Graham. Like, curvy girls don't play sports. Right. Or anybody who is in sports is going to be super lean and not have any curves whatsoever. Apparently, you've never watched the women's American water polo team. Them some chubby chicks. There's a lot. There's a lot of active. There's there's a lot. You have um the tennis, the sisters, mm -hmm. the um the Williams sisters. The Williams. There you go. Uh, even just offhand, even Hope Solo, uh, who's the female goalkeeper, she's she's pretty uh. Muscular. All She's of our solid. all of our weightlifters, all of our Olympic weightlifters were what you would consider obese. Right. Especially that one girl who they didn't measure her obviously for her suit, so her suit didn't zip up all the way. She had to wear her own suit with like a USA patch on it. But Cheryl Teagues uh. came out uh, this week and she said that she, um, quote I don't like it that we're talking about full figured women because we're glamorizing them. And your waist should be smaller than 35 inches. That's what Dr. Oz said, and I'm sticking to it. And this is the consensus with a lot of people who are totally against the fact of having uh, bigger women, full, full, plus size, full sized women, regular, sorry, regular sized American women uh, portrayed in um, on, a, on on the cover of a magazine. Go ahead. Isn't Dr. Oz the one that Congress pulled before court and said, please stop talking about medicine because you don't know what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Congress, yo, said, dude, what the fuck? Stop. S-T-A-H-P. They actually, they're the ones who coined that shit. Stop. Stop. <laughs> so I wanted to, I have the history of, of BMI for you. Well, let me, let me finish this real quick. Okay. Um, she did come out um, in a tweet and apologize. Of course, because of all the backlash to her, uh, and she said, quote, my sincere apologies to everyone I have hurt, which is one of those fake apologies, right? Mm -hmm. It's not an actual apology. It's if you feel that you've been hurt, I'm sorry. That's, that's basically what it is. Um, I truly just want everyone to be healthy and happy, unquote. Here it is, another recant. Right? And, and it's been happening so much lately. Everybody says something and then they have to recant it. Well, I mean, yeah. You say something fucked up, people are going to be like, what? Why? Why are you saying that? That's fucked up to say. And then you got to say, I'm sorry. That was fucked up to say. <sighs> so here's the history of BMI. Using a formula to calculate obesity is not a new concept. In the 19th century. 19th 
century. That's the 1800s for those of you who don't abla. In the 19th century, a Belgian statistician, not a medical professional, a math guy, a math guy, it was a math guy, named Adolfa Quetlet, I think that's how it's pronounced, came up with the Quetlet Index of Obesity, which measures obesity by dividing a person's weight in kilograms by the square of his or her height in inches, which means if you're super short and super heavy, you are automatically morbidly obese. So if you are, for instance, my favorite short person, Rodney LaCroix, the author. Check him out. Love Rodney. Google him. Rodney's amazing. The cock block segment we used to have. The cock block segment we used to have. Um, He's built like a brick shithouse. I mean, he is cut from here to Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Um, He would have a BMI that would make him technically morbidly obese. Because it has nothing to do with how much fat is on your body. It has nothing to do with how healthy you are or how much you move or how anything all it has to do is your weight which is an arbitrary number because if you go to the moon your weight's different it's different it's not the same accord and measured against the square root or whatever cube of your height it's just a fucking made up number bmi means nothing about how healthy you are nothing 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 so I'm going to finish this up real quick, and then we're going to get to you, and you can have the rest of the, the – with your Oscar talk. I know you want to get to your Oscar <laughs> talk. So okay, just a couple of things uh, having to do with big girls and fashion. Uh, Ashley Stewart is uh, going to enlarge its plus size. <laughs> uh, anyway, it is – It's getting bigger, I baby. like I, – I actually really like Ashley Stewart. It's sort of like a fancy avenue. Avenue is like work clothes, business clothes, and things like that. Uh, older women uh, classy clothes uh, and I love Ashley Stewart looking at the clothes because I was never able to buy it before because I'm over a 26 and uh, but now they're extending their range up to a 32 which is great mod cloth has um, decided to retire the term plus size and um, there is no longer a standalone category so you just have to go find the clothes and then Click the sizes to see if it'll go down to your size. Hopefully, they will put in a size search on their site so you can right. just search right. everything that comes in my size. Right. And then um, the other fashion one is uh, in the background, you heard some Beth Ditto playing uh, from the band Gossip. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but she is this beautiful, uh, full figured uh, rock punk. I, I don't even know what to call her music. I, I think of it as kind of like punk. Like a no doubt kind of, you know, maybe even ska. Uh, but she's coming out with a new clothing line and, uh, quote, unapologetic, ethically made, timeless, and um, go to pieces that are designed to last. So there's going to be some expensive pieces in there, but they're made just for the large, full, full figured woman. So um, I love the fashion stuff that's going on. I'll cover, you want to cover the 10 year old or you want to wait? Oh, no, no, go for it. Let's do it. Um, they're, premiering at uh, the New York Fashion Week um, was this new line of clothing called Chubby Line, C-H-U-B-I-I-L-I-N-E, which emphasizes African-American culture, put together by a beautiful 10-year-old African-American girl named Egypt Ufeli, or she, and she goes by Ify, and it was a response, this clothing line was a response to bully people who were bullying her for her size. That is the appropriate response. That is the appropriate response. That is the appropriate response. Oh, you're going to bully me, huh? I'm going to become a millionaire for being chubby. <laughs> and I, I went to I, – I usually wear – I don't wear exciting clothes, you know, like bright – you know, this is like the most exciting that I get is this leopard, purple leopard spray. Anyway, but um, I, I love culture clothes, clothes that uh, uh, show uh, different cultures. Mm -hmm. And her clothes, her clothes are so beautiful. They are. Beautiful. They're absolutely adorable. They're, yeah. They can be great for any age. I mean, anyone can wear Because she them. designs for kids and adults. Yeah. It's not just kids or adults. She designs for both. And a lot of the clothing is available. You could be like matchy mommy daughter. You know, you can get your daughter and you have matching dresses. <laughs> her eyes just went super high. And if her daughter could hear this, you would see the eye roll. She could see the back of her own skull right now if she had seen your eyebrows rise like that. <laughs> that stuff excites me. Like, we had matchy jammies at Christmas. <laughs> She's not I too think keen. it's great. I think I, it's great. I can totally hear oh. <laughs> As a not mom, I think that's great. <laughs>
Uh, All right. She's like, no. Toxie's got Oscar ketchups for us. So I have to tell you, I find the Oscars to be the most boring (laughs) of all of the awards. (laughs) You didn't uh, opt to watch Walking Dead instead? Uh, no, because I'm still so behind. Okay. I'm still on season five. Okay. Um, so I did not actually sit and watch all of the Oscars because there was really only two things I cared about. Number one, the opening. Chris Rock. I wanted to see how the opening would go. And Chris Rock, if you watched it, like he was phenomenal. He was in there. He was like probably the shortest Oscar opening ever. It was not a jazzy song and dance. Um, I did like his otherwise, welcome to the Oscars, otherwise known as the white people's choice award. (laughs) That was great. Or he said, you know, he said something about if, if there wasn't such a, um, uh, if everybody wasn't, um, talking about it as much this year, this would probably be hosted by Neil Patrick Harris. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so he was hilarious, you know, totally, uh, inappropriate at points, (laughs) For, which for is the caliber par for the, the course, show. right? Which is right. par for the course, yeah, yeah. right? Because the Oscars are tend to be more of a stuffy event. It's very, you know, it's high glamour, it's high glitz, it's fucking boring. <laughs> uh, didn't Rob Zombie get tackled? I believe Rob Zombie got tackled at the Oscars by security because he looked like a homeless person on the red carpet. <laughs> That I didn't hear. Yeah. I felt bad for Rob Zombie. I'm like, here he is making some of the highest grossing horror movies of all time. And you're tackling him on the red carpet. Maybe you should know who your famous peoples are. Securities. Are you going to talk about the, I think it was Time Magazine with Oprah and Whoopi? Are you going to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that was part as well. Okay, go ahead. It wasn't, it wasn't Time. It was, um, and of course I can't think of it now, but it it was a fashion. yeah, Yeah, it was a fashion. And they said they posted as uh, they were live tweeting and they posted a picture of, of Whoopi Goldberg and said, wow, we didn't um, realize that that Oprah was tatted, like really cool. You know, she looks great in her dress, only it was Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg does have a beautiful tat, but that stuff on her hands and arms was henna. Right. But I, I think they but, were more yeah, so this, referring. Um, yeah, the chest yeah, the big piece one she there. has is a, is a tat. It is beautiful. It, that doesn't matter. The, the What matters is they mixed up Oprah. Right. And Whoopi. Right. So is this going to be the hashtag all black people look alike? Like, is that That's what's what going happened. on with this? I believe someone bought the That's website. Hashtag all black people look alike? No, without the hashtag, but all black people look alike. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's that's what happened. Obviously, they had to come out and apologize. You know, some some would they mor- say whoopee moron. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, moronic blogger lost their uh, their job. job. <laughs> um, They've taken our jobs. But yeah, so so there was that. So that was probably one of the most exciting parts. But I have to tell you, the best part for me of the entire event. This is all I cared about. This is something that even my daughter was out in the other room and she came in <coughs> screaming. Finally, Leo Wheel. Finally, Leonardo DiCaprio won an Oscar. Finally, for his role against a bear, correct? Right, yeah. right. Revenant. It was the um the Reverend and he Revenant. Reverend. Revenant. Revenant. Rev- Revenant. There you go. Which means remaining peace of. And he he gave a very like poignant speech. At about the global end. Wasn't warming. it about global warming? It was about yeah. global warming and the fact that for this. Um, for this movie, they had to go to the southernmost point of the world uh, because that's the only place that snow is left and that it's a real thing. And, you know, now that we're in the political season, vote for people that are going to um, he didn't say vote for this person or that person. But he said those who aren't run by like big corporations. And I, it was a, it was a great speech. But he thanked he went back and thanked everybody who helped kind of make him who he was. Like he went back to Martin Scorsese and. And everyone, he, here's the thing that I love about Leonardo DiCaprio is like he dates some of the most beautiful women in Hollywood. Yes, he brings his mom to the his Oscars. Mother. That his is awesome. I didn't know that. He, every, I, I believe he's brought her to every award yes. show he's been to. And he brought her to. I this would bring one my mom well. too. I think. Yeah. Yep. No, I he's. Wouldn't. I mean, he's Leo fucking Nardo DiCaprio, and he brings his mother to the awards. Well, yeah. he's, well, he's amazing. One of my I favorite news coffee. websites is uh, now this. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can follow them on Facebook, and they always post videos of news stories, and all of their videos have text in the bottom uh, that goes along with the if there if there is even talking. That way, I don't have to turn on the sound, right? So I can just read the story. But there's this one. It's a compilation of Leonardo DiCaprio through his career, 
um, starting all the way back when he was this fresh faced, mm -hmm. I, what is it, like 10 years old in this first movie and all the movies that he's gone through. And I didn't realize that I practically grew up with this guy. Yeah. Right. And I've seen him and I love so many of his movies. Because I was never like a huge DiCaprio fan. You know, I, I loved him in Titanic, but he was just a kid. You know, it was all about the dress for me in Titanic. <laughs> Some of his biggest parts were completely ad lib. Like in the Titanic, when he said, I'm king of the world. That is now the, I believe, the fourth most popular movie quote. Totally ad libbed. The scene in uh, Wolf of Wall Street where he was on the Quaaludes and um, he's trying to get into his car. Did you see that? Mm -mm. Love that movie. Great part. Like if you watch it, you would really think that he's on Quaaludes. Totally ad-libbed it. One take. It's amazing. Did he have to study too? Yeah, to he be, had to hire a drug hire expert a drug, yeah. because yeah. he's never done drugs. He doesn't know how to be high. Right. He had to, he had to hire Seth Rogen. Just kidding. But he had to hire a drug <laughs> expert. I am going to teach him how to be high. I, you know, I, I, I have to admit it. I do really love Leonardo DiCaprio. So, yay. Yeah. Kudos to yay, you. Yay, Leo. Not and that you need my kudos, but. There was a video after. I didn't realize that they take their Oscars and they take it back to get engraved. Right. There. And there's the most adorable video of him taking it back and watching it get engraved. And his eyes are like. Misty. Like he's, ch well, he's like a child. He's like so amazed. And he's like wow, you do that here? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, I wouldn't know. <laughs> like, he was just so cute. And then I've they only gave been it nominated him. every year since I was 10. Right. And they gave it to him after, and they gave him a little care folder. And he's like, what? I have to upkeep it? He's like, what What does that entail? <laughs> I mean, he was just so cute. He very, very gracious man. Very humble. And um, very humble. And if you watched it in the beginning, the moment that made everyone melt, when Kate Winslet and him caught eyes on the red carpet. And it was like genuine, like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And then they flashed to her during his speech and she was crying. Aww. So, Why do we allow ourselves to get so wrapped up in celebrities' lives? We do, but well, when it's a celebrity like Leonardo DiCaprio, he's right. genuinely a nice guy. Right. Watch now we find out he's like some sort of axe murderer or something. But anyway, genuinely a nice guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't help but like the guy and get wrapped up in his story and his life. Right. He does bring his mom to the Oscars. He could he does, be an right? axe murderer. He could be an axe murderer. A young Norman. <laughs> <laughs> but at this point, he's it's 40. It's for you, mother. It's for you. <laughs> he's 41. You would know now. Yeah. You would know. He's he's way too in the spotlight. All of the ones who uh, do things that you never hear about, eventually it comes out. Dustin you know? Diamond. Well... Dustin <laughs> Diamond doesn't count for anything. <laughs> so, come on, speech from Say by the Bell, but like Will Smith had a squeaky clean life. You never heard anything bad about Will Smith, and then all of a sudden, you know, his marriage is a sham. He's involved in Scientology. He's a polygamist. Wait, he, is that all true? Because I love Will Smith. Um, <laughs> it's stuff that came out. Whether it is or not, I don't know. Oh, so we but, don't know if it's true, right? Well, Jada, although Jada has said something along the lines without saying yes, we have... Don't sully Will Smith, woman. Not, they may not, no, they it's not, not be polygamy. Sham. They, they may have an open relationship. They do have an open relationship. I mean, yeah, why, why is that, that a, they've explained. So here's the thing. If they love each other and they're married to each other and they're okay with having an open relationship, why is the rest of the world so fucking pissed off about it? It's none of our goddamn business. But it's Will Smith. It and he matter. had just such a squeaky clean... You never it, heard anything bad. And then all of a sudden, you know, the old Aunt Viv said, you know, he was horrible on the set. And, you know. Yeah. Hey, this is CincinnatiBounty.com. Uh, we love being here and doing this show. Send in your comments, emails, Facebooks, whatever. Let us know how we're doing. If there's anything you want us to cover or do. We've got some ideas for segments coming up, like America. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Go to our website to watch videos, YouTube channel for all of our old shows. And um, we're still getting hits on some of those interviews that you guys did at BBWCon. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. so you guys know. Those beautiful porn stars. Can't miss them. That's right. Lots of jiggling on those videos. So go check out our YouTube channel. We're all over the web. Just type in Sin City Bounty. Uh, leave off the word hunters. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. We'll be back next Tuesday. We love you guys. Peace. Pretty kitty